Welcome to this InDesign tutorial for beginners that walks you through the absolute basics of the program. InDesign is my favorite program because you can use it for anything print related, PDF presentations to clients, and interactive documents, and then a bunch more things as well. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for future tips and tutorials to help you grow your design skills and business. The first thing we're gonna do is set up the document. You can go to create new, and that will prompt this window that allows you to choose the size of your document. There are many different preset sizes you can choose from, such as letter size, legal, tabloid, half letter. It even has a four, a five, and business card size. So you don't have to figure out what size that should be. If you wanna choose your own custom size, you can do that by, let's say, typing in 10 inches by, let's say, 12 inches. And then you can set up the name of your document. For this sake, we'll call it for the creatives tutorial. And you can choose whether you have the orientation being portrait or landscape. You can choose the number of pages in your document. If this is going to be a print document, you want to make sure it's in increments of four because that is how the printer works. They work in pages of four increments. So it would need to be four, eight, 12, etc. So right now we're gonna set it to 12. And you can actually, if you go preview, you can see the document that you're setting up behind it. We're gonna also have it on facing pages, which means as you can see over here, you have the two pages next to each other. That way you can see what it will look like in a booklet format. Then you can choose the amount of columns. See so here the columns, the gutter, that's the space between the columns. You can choose the size of the margins. If you have this lock symbol on, then it will change all four margins together. If you choose to unlock it, it'll only affect the top, or the inside, whatever one you are using. I like to just keep the margins consistent throughout. And then you can choose the bleed. What the bleed is, in case you don't know, for printing documents, for printing booklets, it's important that if you have artwork that goes past the edge of the page to go all the way to this red line. That will make it when the printer prints it and they cut it at the designated size, it won't have any white paper showing through. So that's really important. You wanna make sure if you have a color that's meant to go to the edge of the page or some image that you put it all the way to the red line. And I like to have it a quarter inch just to make sure that it really will not have any white paper showing. Then you have the slug which is something that is used for notes. If you need to write a note to a printer, it'll show up in the PDF outside of the actual document. But I'm not gonna use that right now. And one other note on this is there's also preset templates, which I never use, but in case you're getting started with design and you wanna use one of Adobe's free templates, those are there as well. All right, so now we're gonna hit create. So there is our document. Now we're gonna talk about the interface of the InDesign document. So over here you have your tools panel. Up here you have the control panel, which you can modify what is actually showing. You can see that here, okay? And then over here you have your other panels. And these can be freestanding like that, or you can have them all docked together. And the way that you open new ones is by window. And let's say we wanna open the stroke panel. So then you see over here, the stroke panel opened up. You can also have a customized workspace. So I have my own favorites, and this is the way I like to normally have my document set up. Now to get into some of the key tools that you're gonna to be using, I'll, I'll get into each one of these in later tutorials, 
But just so you know, the main one that's going to be like the mouse is the selection tool. And then the one that is going to be your type is normally, you see the T there. That's your type tool. Hello, this is the type tool. Now when you see this little arrow in the corner of any of the little images over on the tools panel, that means there is another option that you can choose. So for this sake, this also has type on a path tool. And what that is, I'm gonna show you an example. I just selected the circle object, which is right here. And then I'm gonna go back to my type and I'm gonna say type on a path. Now you see when you hold this over that and click, now it will allow me to type on a circle path like this. All right, so and those are the main ones. I also use the eyedropper tool a lot. And what this is good to do is, let's say you love the type of font that's over here and you want to apply it to this font here. You can go to the eyedropper tool while you have this font selected and you can just basically scoop up that style and put it on this style. So that's a very cool little tool there. This is also the color that is being used. So let's say we want to turn this whole thing blue. So that's gonna show here that it's blue. And then this is the stroke. So if we want to change that, you just double click on it. And then now it'll have, it'll show the blue stroke there as well. Now, as you can see, this is the ruler here as well. And what that does is when you click on it, you can actually drag down guides. And you can have as many as you want, drag them down. You can also just select them and delete them. Now we're gonna do the links, and that is Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. And we're gonna go here to import an image and you just select it. Now, there's different import options. You can either replace the image that's selected in case you're selecting an image that's already there, or you can show import options. These aren't really necessary right now. What you're gonna do is just select the image and hit open, and then you can just drag it. It'll scale proportionally, so you don't need to worry about holding down shift or anything. And there's your image. And then you can see it up here in the links panel. Let's say we wanna correct this in the actual document it was created in. You just select it and hit option, double click. And then we are going to, let's just pretend we wanna get rid of the document, the background document. Now we save it. And it'll update. Sometimes it doesn't actually update and you'll see a yellow triangle here and then you just double click that yellow triangle and it will update in the document. Now, when you want to view it at the highest quality, you go to view, display performance. It has fast display that'll make it into a gray box. That's if you wanna be working really fast and don't wanna be slowed down by large images. Then you can go to typical display, which will make it appear a bit blurry. And then you can go to high display and that'll make it look like it would when it prints. Then to scale your image, what you can do is either if you were to drag it with the actual selection tool, it's just going to change the what's called the bounding box. But if you want to change the actual size of the image, you just hit the A tool, which it brings up this direct selection tool. You click directly in there. Now you're in the image itself, not in the bounding box within the image. And what you wanna do is hold down shift and you drag it and that'll make sure it scales proportionately. And then you wanna just drag it down with your selection tool, which is this one or V, which is a shortcut. And now you can see it's been enlarged proportionately. 
So that is one way of actually making it so that an image is bigger. Another way you can do it is by going up here while it's selected and you can scale it to whatever percentage. You can also say I want it 60%. And as long as you have this locked, it will do it proportionately. Now, if you want to save a file, you go Command or Control on a PC, Command S on a Mac, and it will show you where you want to save it. It'll ask you where you want to save it. Let's save it in here for now. Now, if you'd like to export your document, you go Command E on a Mac or Control E on a PC. And that will then prompt it to pull up this window, which will allow you to export it in any one of these different file formats. The primary ones we use are print and interactive. Interactive is for something that's going to be online or something that will be able to be interacted with, such as clickable links or videos embedded. But for print, we're going to just use this one here. So we say save and it's going to bring up this window, which gives you different options to or presets for the way you want to export it. Now, this is one that's very commonly used by printers as well as high quality print. And then it allows you to also choose if you want crop marks, if you want bleed to be showing, which you really do if you're going to be having images go to the edge of the page. And then it's also going to be a place where you can choose if you want to have it shown in spreads or in two up pages. Now, what that means, you will see in one second. We also want to view the PDF after exporting. So we're going to export it. Okay, so there it is. So now we can see that this is the document and it has all of the pages next to each other. And you see these crop marks. So that's where it's going to be cut off by the printer. Now I just want to show you some keyboard shortcuts. So we have Command J or Control J on a PC. And when you do that, it will prompt this little window and you can choose what page you want to go to. So let's say you have a hundred page document and you don't want to scroll to the pages. You can just say, I want to go to page seven and it'll take you to page seven. So that's a cool one. If you want to view your document without any of these rules or any of the actual bleed showing, you hit W and it'll show it as if it was going to be printed or in a PDF format. And then you just hit W to get back to the previous way. T is used for type. So you hit the T and then you can type anything you want. Now make sure though, before you, you can't hit T and then go out of that. You have to actually hit the selection tool to get out of the type. Otherwise you're going to be typing a lot of different T's. And then another cool one that I wanted to tell you about is holding down the space bar will bring up this little hand, which will allow you to move without selecting anything. So that's just holding the space bar. That's all I have for this tutorial, but if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for future InDesign tutorials, as well as videos on how to expand your business. I also have a downloadable guide to help you double your design clients if you apply each step. That link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.